Welcome to Studio 90. The U.S. team has just returned to its hotel here. Amazing victory over Whoa. Algeria. 1-0 in stoppage time. Uh, once again, we're joined by U.S. assistant coach Mike Sorber. Sorber's, uh, wow. That's all I can say. Uh, you know, one of, if not the greatest, uh, victories in United States history, an historic win. Uh, your emotions right now. Yeah, wow is a great way to sum it up. Uh, again, I think the, the group as a whole came together and, and never said die and uh, really fought to the end uh, against some pretty crazy odds because the longer it looked or it went, it looked like the ball just wasn't going gonna go into the end of the net. But uh, we said at halftime we might score in the 46th minute or the 90th minute and sure enough it went all the way to the end. Now the team dodged a bullet early, the ball hit the crossbar. Uh, very early, uh, but the team played such a good attacking first half. You really sort of took the game to them. Did you feel that way? Yeah, I thought uh, overall that that we kept probing and and looking for chances in different ways, whether it was off of corner kicks or free kicks, um, little through balls. Uh, you know, the ball bounces to Josie and it goes over the top. You know, we end up with uh, a good chance with Hercules down the right side. The keeper saves it. We lay it across. You know, maybe it's uh, onside, but the referee calls it back. So you just have to keep going. And then, you know, you head into the second half. And again, the, the chances kept coming, but it wouldn't go in the goal. Uh, how amazing is it to get uh, yet another apparently good goal called back, back-to-back -back games in a World Cup? I mean, what are you thinking on the bench? Uh, really, you have to put it behind you because if you, if you keep focusing on the chances that aren't going in or, or the goals that they keep calling back, then you're going to be stuck at that point. So... Um, you know, I thought after the first 20 minutes, the game opened up a little bit and it was back and forth and, uh, you know, it was a dog fight to the end. All right. Well, so obviously you heard at halftime that England was up 1-0. The United States needs to win, need a goal. Uh, any different instructions for the boys at halftime? No, uh, actually we heard in the 22nd minute that, that England had scored. And so, you know, the instructions were just that England is ahead 1-0, which means we have to win. Um, but we said we have to stick to the game plan. Um, you know, we have to try to not give up many chances, and yet we still have to push forward and, and keep going and going and going until we get it. Now, uh, speaking of the game plan, uh, some tremendous games by the U.S. attacking personalities uh, as well as the defensive shutout. Uh, but talk about that interplay in the center midfield there, also with the flank midfielders, and then with Josie and whoever was up with him up top. Yeah, that's what is great about this team and, and really about these first three games is we've used quite a few guys and, and uh, each guy in his own way has done a good job and uh, nobody has really come out because they were having a bad game. It's just the way the games kind of developed and the way we knew we had to push that uh, we've tried some different looks at it. And so, you know, we started out with Mo and Michael in the middle and Clint and Landon and then... Um, you know, we put Benny in and, and move Clint up top to take a look at that. And then eventually we move Clint back into the midfield and move Benny inside and take Mo out, put Buttle into the game. And, and at the end, we go back to three backs, uh, four midfielders and Clint kind of underneath or, or three forwards, if you want to call it that. And, um, you know, Timmy Howard made a good save and was our, our first attacker because he gave a great outlet to Landon, who who made the run and the ball comes across, comes back to Landon and he buries it. So it was good. Now clearly uh, all three subs were attacking subs. Uh, the United States was going for the, for the win, obviously the goal to get through. Uh, started to get toward the end of the match there. Ten minutes left, five minutes left. What was running through the coaching staff's mind there? Well, it, it was just a matter of what, what minute did we want to go to three backs. And, and the previous game against Slovenia, it was with 10 minutes left. And so the conversation was 15 minutes or 10 minutes. Ended up being about 10 minutes. And, uh, you know, we just knew that we were going to get one more chance, and you had to believe that, and it happened. All right, so this is the first time the United States has won uh, its group at the World Cup. Uh, the first time the United States has won a third group game at the World Cup, and the first time the United States has gone unbeaten in group play during a World Cup. So can you sort of give us your feelings, your emotions, uh, how it feels not only to be a part of history, but also finish the top of the group over England? No, it's, uh, it's fantastic. We knew it was a really tough group, 
there were a few experts out there that thought it was a, a rather easy group for, for England and the USA, but we knew better than that. And, uh, you know, one of our goals was to get out of the group stage. As we moved through the games, uh, once we tied Slovenia, today's goal was that, look, we have a chance to go undefeated, um, win a third game, which we knew had not been done, and come in first place. So we had set those as our goals, and uh, today we accomplished that. Can you just get, give us an idea of what happened on the bench when, when Landon scored, when it went in? You know, where were you? Where, where were the coaches? I mean, I know everyone ran to the corner. I don't know if you did, but just give us a, a little insight to what happened there. Yeah, I mean, everybody just erupted because uh, there was a lot of pent-up emotion yeah. there from, from the ball that wouldn't go into the goal. And so uh, it, it was released at that moment on the bench, in the stands, back home. And most people ran down to the corner to celebrate. Uh, a couple of us stayed because we knew we had to get the, the uh, arrangement aligned again to get four backs and, and four midfielders and two forwards. And uh, we got that accomplished and finished out the game. All right, so what does it say about this crazy game of soccer to you know, be in a World Cup and one instant you're out of the World Cup and the next moment you're, you're winning the group and on to the next stage? A, a pretty amazing experience. No, it's, uh, it's one of the best experiences of your life to be a part of it. And uh, anytime you're a part of success and, and winning uh, and getting points, uh, everybody knows how much goes into this and it's a lot of time and a lot of effort and it, it didn't just come together today or a week ago it's been a process for the last four years so a lot of people have put in time and effort and um, it's rewarding to be a part of it. All right well finishing up here a lot of the guys in the, in the mix zone in the post game interviews talked about uh, the belief they had in each other uh, to a man, everyone thought that they were going to get that goal. Just talk a little bit about that team chemistry and, and that camaraderie that's on the U.S. team. Yeah, I think that's something that uh, we've really tried to build over time here is the group. And until you get your 23 established, that's a little bit challenging. But since we finally uh, were able to name the roster and have the, the final 23, um, we know the other guys that, that aren't here with us, they're actually a part of this also. But... Um, you know, each game has kind of built upon itself, and these tough challenges and these great moments, tough moments, they really bring you uh, closer together and, and form a really strong bond. So we think we have something good going, and, you know, we think we can uh, keep moving forward and, and win quite a, quite a few more games. All right, last question. It's only a few hours after the game here, uh, but have you sort of felt the reverberations, the impact back home. We've been watching some videos here of fans pouring out of the, the bars onto the streets and chanting. Uh, Landon told me he got 79 text messages just in an hour after the game. Yeah. You know, ha have you had a chance to feel any of that yet? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, three things. The text messages, without a doubt, you know, 35 after the game. Uh, speaking to my father after the game and then speaking to my wife and, and kids. They had some people over and... Uh, there were like five kids and they were all on the edge of their seats and, and when the goal went in, they all celebrated and, and it was a great moment. So um, everybody has uh, told us that they're pouring into the streets and waving flags and just going crazy. So it's awesome. It is awesome. Mike Sorber, thanks so much for joining us as always. Uh, the work is not done though. Yes, Mike Sorber. The work is not done, though. The United States is on to the round 16 here at the 2010 World Cup.